All right, what's up guys? It is Josh back with another video. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you something I haven't touched up on at all on the channel yet. And that's actually how you can edit your very own YouTube intros. The last video I posted was kind of a transition video, um, pardon the pun, but it was actually how to how you can make your own transitions. It was a transition between the Fortnite editing content that I make into the kind of more generalized content editing kind of thing that I'm gonna be trying to post on the channel from now on. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering various different aspects of your YouTube intros how you can pull them off, um, syncing, timing, music, various different effects that you can add, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I just want to say a lot of you guys, about 70% are not subscribed to the channel yet. Make sure to drop a sub. It's 100% free for you guys to do, and you can change your mind at a later date. But with that being said, hope you guys do enjoy the video. I'll see you guys on my PC. All right, guys, so I'm in Adobe After Effects right now. We're just going to go into a new composition. We're just going to make sure that our stuff is on 1920 by 1080, 60 FPS. And then uh, you can set your duration to whatever. So I normally make it about um, two minutes because that's around how long my recording is for my intro. And for this video, what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be using the intro for the transitions video to kind of show you as a baseline how you can do this. So I'm going to go to project, I'm going to go to my media pool, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in the recording of my audio for my Streamlabs. That's how I actually pull that off. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the folder where I have the actual um, video for my camera. And if we drag this in here, we can hear that the audio isn't the greatest and the the uh, quality is a lot right, lower. Up. It is Josh back with another. So you can hear that. So if we were to do this, and then we mute this one, what going to be doing is I'm we can hear that the quality is a lot better. Uh, so what I do for this is I normally clap three times. Let me quickly drag this to the top layer so you can actually see it. So we can see right here, we're actually going to sync up these claps with each other. And this is what I always do. This is just something you guys can um, use as a little trick to sync up your stuff, especially if you're using a camera. If you're using a webcam, no big deal. Just set that up in Streamlabs. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-comp this just like this. And then I'm going to go in my pre-comp, mute this. We're going to hide the video for the bottom layer. And then we're going to press Control alt f and that'll scale it to size. So then we can hear right here and then what we're gonna do i'll actually do it from outside of here we can see all right guys what is up it is josh back the syncing could be a bit better but it's whatever so the main control you're gonna want to learn in after effects is Control shift d that's what we actually use to cut something so we're just going to press Control shift d right here that'll cut this layer and then we have the part that we're actually going to start with so what I'm going to show you quickly is how we can just cut down our intro. Right, guys, what is up? It is Josh. So we can see obviously the basic video. rundown. Video, what you're covered in this video. I talk about what I'm going to be showing off in the video, and then I go into a. The software I'm actually going to go over. It. Well, little spill right, right here as well, and then I talk about something else. So then I'm going to trim off either side of where I actually talk, and then we can see there's a quiet gap right here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to find this third portion. Before I actually get into it though, I just... So I quickly talk about how people aren't subscribed to the channel yet, which is something I recommend you should do. So just say something like, I don't know, like 70% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, blah, 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 drop a sub, leave them down below in the comments and I'll be sure to leave. So I messed that up. So then what I did is I redid it. So we're gonna, just going to trim this portion out. And this is actually going to be the final part. So we're just going to trim that down too. Okay. So the main thing you want to do is you're going to want to find what I do is I find it before it trails off and I sync this part up with where it starts peaking. So right about here covered in this video. The software I'm actually going to go. And we're going to drag it over just a bit. Video. The software I'm actually going to go. Over and we'll bring it underneath this layer right here. That way the audio comes in before the actual video, so it will look like this in this video. The software I'm actually going to go over is Adobe App. It's nothing too crazy, um, obviously, it's just basic. But then what we're going to do is we're going to bring our levels up by pressing L on our keyboard twice. We're going to do the exact same thing. So we can see this trailing. We're going to do this right here as well. Quick before I actually get into Bring that over as well. Quick before I actually get into it though, I and we'll bring that underneath this layer right here. And that's pretty much all you need to do for the actual syncing and timing so then what we're going to do is we have all this done so i'm going to show you how you could actually bring our in transition uh, what i do is i use blur mode curves if you guys don't know it's something to zoom so we're just going to add blur mode curves um, what you guys can do is you can just go over here and look up blur mode curves and drag it onto the layer but what i do is something called um, like a zoom out almost but it's like a snappy one so we're going to change the initial value to 0.5 on the first frame then we're gonna go, I don't know, maybe 25 frames. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll do 35, sorry. 
and we're gonna change the value to one. Then we're gonna press U. We're gonna look at these keyframes. All right, guys, what is up? It is. And we can see that that zoom looks kind of linear, so we're just gonna select these keyframes, press F9, go into our graph editor, and we're gonna do a uh, graph edited zoom. So we're gonna bring this one up right here, and we can see what this is gonna do is it kind of rounds off this curve and makes it look All right, guys, what is up? less All right, guys, what is um, up? linear. So that's what I do for right, guys, my zoom up? at the beginning. All right, guys, what is I can bring this over just a bit more if we want it to look right, guys, a bit what is more up? smooth. Is and just like that, we have right, guys, our little zoom out. But what I do is I'll also add like a bit of an opacity. So I press T on my keyboard just to bring up the opacity. I keyframe it at zero. And then I'll do like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frame opacity fade too. Just that way we have a bit of a right, clean. Guys, what is up? It is bring it in kind of thing. I don't even know how to explain it, but All right, guys, what is up? I just got John's this back with another video in today's video. And then I explain it. And then in this video, the software I'm actually going to go over is Adobe After Effects. But I so that brings me to my next point, which is going to be pop up. So what we're going to do, um, I tend to actually like I don't put a lot of effort into my intros a lot when I'm doing a tutorial just because I don't really need to because people aren't there for the intro and I don't need to hook them. It's just more about what I'm actually showing. So I'll actually just show you how you can actually get this. Go to your Internet Explorer. It's like, I don't even know. After Effects PNG. And then we're going to go to images. Uh, we'll just use this one. This one looks like it'll work. So then we're going to right click on it. We're going to go to save image as we're going to save it as after effects, wherever um, I'm just going to save it to, I don't even know. Let's just save it to our desktop. Why not? And then what we're going to do is we're going to open the folder. We're going to drag it in. We're going to go back to the point where so we mentioned it. Yourself, it does the, is Adobe after effects be after. So we can see right here is where we want the pop-up to actually come in. So we're going to go maybe 15 frames before one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, sorry, 20. I don't know. I'm not really on the ball today. We're going to press S on our keyboard, scale it down just to kind of move it where we want to. And then let's say we want our positioning over here. So we're going to press P and we want our starting point. We want it to come in, let's say, I don't even know, like right here or something. So we're going to keyframe it on our marker because obviously this is where it needs to come in. So we're going to have it keyframed at that point on the marker and then we'll drag it over on this one here. And then what we could do is we can just copy paste these ones here and rearrange it so then if we want it to last i don't even know like this duration Adobe after effects but i will have presets for something like that and then we'll press Control shift d get rid of it and we'll go press f9 and this is the graphs that i use actually for my pop-ups just right click on this and then we're going to do separate dimensions and then we only change the x value so we can go into the graph for this and what we're going to do is we're going to do something that looks a bit like this so we're just going to do this should be good there is adobe after effect there is adobe after so that's kind adobe of like a snap after, in i will have presets for and they drag out or you can bring it as like a less aggressive but i will one. have presets for but i will have presets for just like that and you could do it so it's like you can even do something like that if you want adobe but it's after, more of like a snappy kind of thing i like to kind of ease into adobe it after effect and then we're just going to actually add motion blur by collect, uh, sorry, not collecting, clicking this tile right here. After and that adds a nice, super, a nice effect to it. And then we're going to add drop shadow just like this. I add it to most of my uh, pop-ups. We're going to change it to 30 for shift Y and shift X for the drop at, drop shadow. And then that is pretty much that for the pop-up. Is Adobe After Effects, but I will have presets for DaVinci Resolve. And that is how you do pop-ups for your actual things. Uh, if you want to do something else, like the DaVinci Resolve logo, you could do that. And that is pretty much pop-ups. So the next thing I'm going to do is just quickly transitions. I showed this in my last video. Uh, we'll do something like a rotate. So we're just going to find the uh, point where it separates. Control-Alt-Y to add our adjustment layer. Control-Shift-D on either side here, just to get a kind of uh, small piece of the layer we could use. Click on it, go to animation, apply animation preset. And then we're actually going to go to our transition pack, go to AE, go to our rotate transition. So it's going to be a zoom out, rotate that we're going to use. I'll have all these in the transition pack. I'll have that in the description. The software I'm actually going to go, the software I'm actually going to go over, yeah. the software I'm actually going to Just like that. Looks super clean. And then, you know, we do that to this if we wanted to, we change the values. And that is pretty much that for transitions. So the next thing you want to do is going to be, I don't know, I do a shake normally. It depends on the kind of video, the style you want to do. So I'll select all these. I'll pre-compose them normally. 
just that way the shake doesn't mess up and I'll add an S shake to them. I'll quickly go over the settings in a second. I have a preset for it. So I'm actually going to fire up the Sapphire plugins browser because I have some presets in here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to select the one that I have and it'll just take a second right here. It is called, let me quickly find it. Don't need, shake Franchos. So the settings I have for it is uh, 0.14 amplitude. My frequency is 0.4. I'll let you copy these settings right here. This is the X and Y. This is the Z. The, uh, Z. the tilt shake is uh, zero. And I have that throughout the entire thing. All right, guys, what is up? It is Josh back with another video. And that kind of gives like an uneasy look. And then I'll just press S on this entire pre-comp and I'll change the value of the scale to 105. And what that'll do is it'll just zoom in on everything just because if we don't have it like that, you will notice that you might have like a black boundary. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like a line on the outside right there. So I just zoom it in so the line's not visible. And uh, that is pretty much that. And all we got to do, um, you can go into YouTube. What I do is I find any sort of lo-fi. So you can go um, Eric Godlow if you want. He's got some really good ones. He's got these lo-fis that are copyright free. I have them actually saved on a folder on my PC. I can put them in a Google Drive if you guys want to just download all of these directly uh shout out to eric godlow by the way i'll have his channel in the description if you guys want to drop a sub to him um i use the song lovely a lot so let me quickly see yeah so this is lovely we're gonna drag it in and then what i'll do is i'll find where the beat actually starts i'll cut it before it and then we'll have something like this all right guys what is up it is josh I'm back with another video and today's and maybe a bit more all right guys what is up it is josh all right guys what is up it is josh back. just like that and then what we're gonna do we'll press l make our audio level negative 25 decibels back with another video in today's video all right guys what is up it is josh back with another video in today's video that is super clean and then all we got to do here is i normally do like a i don't even know like two second runoff after and then i'll just keyframe the levels just right here and I will bring it down to like 50, but I'll crossfade it with a different song so it's not noticeable. Just like that. And then obviously we would have a transition between this and the actual footage. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. Something I also would recommend that can increase the quality of your actual intros would be buying something from a creator set. So this isn't an ad. Um, by any means, I definitely do recommend checking out creator set because I picked up so many things from them. And it's just a great way to have these pop-ups made already for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the actual um, folder that I have in them. I have all of these. They're literally, like, there's so many of them. So what I'm going to do in After Effects as well. In your mind at a later date. 2% briefing. So I'm going to find where it says sub to the channel. And I'm going to drag in this creator set um, YouTube subscription thing that I have. And I'm just going to position it downwards right here. I want to say a lot of you guys, but 70% are not subscribed to the channel. The channel is to make sure drop a sub. It, it looks something like that. I'd say a lot of you guys, but 70% are not subscribed to the channel. It's to make sure to drop a sub. It is 100% free for guests. That's pretty much that. I mean, that's how you edit intros for beginners. It's super easy. You can mess around. If you wanted to do something like a zoom, let's just say using your own YouTube videos, whether it's using your own, in your own YouTube. So when I say YouTube videos, for example, if we want to distress YouTube videos, we could change the scale right here from 100 to, I don't even know, like let's say 130, just like this. And then we want it to, I don't even know, zoom it back out or something. We could just do that, do it almost the same kind of graph as the, what's it called, pop-ups. So then we'll snap it just like this. Using your own YouTube videos, whether it's to in your own YouTube video. Pretty much that, guys. Um, uh, there's not much to say. It's just it's up to you how you want to execute your own intros and how you want the flow and the style to feel. I go for a more chill vibe. Don't have anything over the top. I know some people have all these subtitles all that um, subtitle process is the exact same all you do is just add drop shadow to text and then do almost the same kind of thing but with y position or x position if you wanted to do that um, i'll have a separate video on uh, subtitles coming out maybe next week if you guys want to see that leave me a comment down below letting me know that that's what you want to see so i'll be sure to make it 
Um, but with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy it. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in a future video on the channel on how you can edit your very own content, how you can improve the level of your content editing, all that stuff. But I'll see you guys in a new video. Peace out.